Hi friends, welcome to Diagnox. I am Dr. Farakat. Today, I am going to present another interesting case related to salivary glands. That's Silodocytis fibrinosa. Silodocytis fibrinosa is a rare salivary gland disease characterized by recurrent salivary gland swelling and pain as a result of mucofibrinous plaques. It is also known as Kussmaul's disease. Patients typically have a history of multiple recurrence glandular swellings, dehydration, decreased salivary flow, thick fibrous strands extruding from the orifice of salivary ducts, and a history of allergic disease. A 30-year-old female patient visited us with a complaint of intermittent swelling of the both parotid glands and thick discharge from the orifice of Stenson's duct for the past 5 years. She did not have pain in either parotid or submandibular gland nor she complained of xerostomia, dysphagia, etc. Patient gives a history of recurrent allergy to dust and she has also undergone a surgery in the mammary glands before 5 years. On extra oral examination, she had mild diffuse swelling of both parotid glands. On intra oral examination, the Stenson's duct orifices appeared normal. When the parotid glands were palpated, thick mucus strands were expelled from the orifice of parotid duct followed by little watery saliva. Both the orifices of submandibular gland appeared normal with clear saliva. An OPG was advised which didn't show any significant findings. Also an MRI revealed a normal ductal architecture and glandular structures. The patient was advised a silogram. Silography revealed ductal dilatation followed by stricture in the right side. Filling defects were seen in the duct just before it entered the gland and also focal collection of contrast medium is seen in both glands. These are the features of siladenitis and silodocytis. This patient was advised to drink adequate amount of water, gentle massage of the glands and she was also prescribed antihistamine for one month. Patient was reviewed after one month and she is doing well with considerably normal saliva present from the orifice of both parotid and submandibular glands. The diagnosis of Silodocytis fibrinosa is difficult as many of the symptoms and findings are non-specific. Thus, it is necessary to rule out the most common causes of salivary gland swelling such as Silolithiasis, Jogren syndrome or salivary gland tumors. Additionally, certain drugs such as Ethambutol, iodine compounds and heavy metals can cause salivary gland enlargement as a side effect. Visualizing mucus plaques at the salivary duct orifice grossly or on imaging is more specific for Silodocytis fibrinosa. Lab test and imaging can also prove beneficial in ruling out autoimmune etiologies and revealing the presence of calculi as the cause of swelling. Many patients with Silodocytis fibrinosa has elevated eosinophil count and histologic examination of patients showed eosinophilic infiltrations and also many responded well 
to antihistamines lending further credence to the underlying allergic mechanism even our patient had a history of allergic episodes and also responded to antihistamine which shows us that cyloidocatus fibrinosa has definitely an allergic role as an etiology in conclusion patient undergoing diagnostic workup for episodes of recurrent parotid or submandibular swelling where systemic and infectious causes have been ruled out cyloidocatus fibrinosa should be considered as a potential cause cyloidocatus fibrinosa is a disease which may be easily treated by conservative means therefore improving the patient's quality of life if you like our video kindly subscribe our youtube channel diagnox meet you all with another interesting video in another day thank you